Hello everyone. This week's experiment will be on solubility and we are going to understand the intermolecular forces that are behind the solubility of a substance. So in that case we will review the types of intermolecular forces of attraction. We will also classify different compounds based on the intermolecular forces of attraction that play a role in the interaction with other substances and we will examine the solubility of certain substances in water. And so to begin we know that each substance has a chemical building block. So for example a water molecule has two hydrogens and one oxygen so that's one water molecule and the type of interactive forces between each of these molecules determines the physical state of a substance. So here we have solids, we have liquids, and we have gases. And for a solid, especially the ionic substances, we understand that there's the forces of electrostatic attraction or repulsion between cations and anions are very strong and that is why they are they exist in the solid state so if you see for example this sodium chloride the sodium chloride is a building block but then when you see how several sodium chloride molecules are connected to each other you can see how those forces of attraction are very strong and they keep the molecule intact they keep all those molecules closer together and they exist in a solid state. And when you come to polar substances, for example, water molecules that have um, polar covalent forces of attraction, these are somewhat strong um, dipole, di they form somewhat strong forces which are called the dipole dipole forces. And this therefore makes water exists in a liquid state so they are not as compact as the solid but they are close enough to maintain this shape that they are um, the molecules are close enough with each other and you realize that water molecules form hydrogen bonding which is a special type of dipole dipole forces which is um, strong and therefore you can see that molecules that exist in the liquid state are mostly the polar covalent ones and then lastly you talk about gases which are which have very weak um, forces intermolecular forces between its molecules so one um, carbon dioxide molecule interacting with the other ones you can kind of see that there's not really like a strong force that brings these molecules together so they they have the dispersion forces, the London dispersion forces, which are weaker, and that's why the molecules are farther away from each other. But you have to realize that with dispersion forces, they become greater as the size of the molecule increases. So just again to go over the types of intermolecular forces of attraction, as we say, dispersion forces are weaker, and they arrive from they arise from um, induced dipole-dipole for, um, forces that are just moment momentar they, they momentarily form, and it depends with the size of a substance of a molecule. Sorry. So these are the weakest forces of attraction, and they are found mostly in non-polar molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide and nitrogen for example and when we go to dipole dipole these are found in covalent molecules they have medium strength um, and an example of it is uh, like acetone in water or just acetone with itself so hydrogen bonding I talked about it being also medium strong and this exists between compounds that have nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine, the three most electronegative elements. And then for ion dipole, 
this is when um, a salt, for example, sodium ion, sodium, the cations in sodium chloride and or the anion, the chloride molecules, interact with the partial positive end of the water molecule and that they form the ion and dipole interaction. This is also a medium strong. And then for ion, ion, this is very strong. The one example that I had given you with the sodium chloride between a metal and a non-metal, these are the strongest of all the intermolecular forces of attraction. And um, so that that's that for the intermolecular, the different types of intermolecular forces. So looking at this concept of solubility, we know that water is very important in every living system because of its ability to dissolve and transport substances. And for solubility to occur, there has to be a favorable interaction between the solute and the solvent. And so this will also be based on the type of intermolecular forces of attraction that the solute will form with a solvent and this will tell us whether that substance will dissolve in water or not. So for example, ionic compounds can form favorable interactions with water um, since the positive, um, the cation in the salt will interact with the partial negative end of the water molecule forming an ion dipole. So when we have this interaction then that means water molecules can surround the salt and therefore we can say that the salt is dissolved but you have to remember that some ionic compounds are not soluble and this is mainly because their ionic forces are stronger than the ion dipole attraction that will be formed between the water molecule and the salt molecule so um we can say that ionic substances that have higher charge on their ions are less likely to be soluble in water. And this is, an, let's say, use an example of magnesium oxide. Um, so magnesium oxide has, magnesium has a plus two charge, and then the oxide has a minus two charge. So plus two and minus two is a very strong force of attraction compared to sodium chloride. So sodium has a plus one charge, chloride has a minus one charge. So if you compare the attraction between a charge of plus one, minus one, and that of plus two and minus two, then you know that we have a stronger attractive force between the plus two and minus two charges. And that means the um, salt, uh, I mean, that means the magnesium oxide is less likely to dissolve in water um, than the sodium chloride. And so you understand this concept of like dissolves like. So nonpolar substances will mix with other nonpolar substances or weakly polar substances. But polar substances will mix with other polar molecules or ionic compounds. So just the example of salt and water. Or, you know, the way that polar molecules interact with water is one by forming the hydrogen bonding. Um, and then when you think about covalent substances dissolving in water, you have to consider the overall structure of the covalent substance. Because some of them might have the hydrogen bonding or the dipole at one end, but then the rest of the molecule is largely nonpolar. That means it has like a longer chain of carbon atoms. So in this case, Yes, you may have a small part of the water of water interacting with just the polar end, but then the rest of the molecule will not be soluble just because of uh, the unfavorable interaction between the nonpolar end of the molecule and the polar end of the water molecule. All right, so <clears throat> for this experiment, we have a list of about 16 compounds that need to be classified and um, categorized into being soluble or not soluble in water. 
So you will find your experimental video on top hat and that should be able to provide you with the information that you need to fill in your report sheet and also for your notebook record. So you find also the details of your experimental procedure in your manual and I will not go through the specifics. And the rest of it is just when you're in the lab you don't want to mix the chemical substances as you do. Yeah, so I think this is it and you should be able to have enough information to for this um, experiment. And I just want you guys to think about with the compounds that have been provided for you. Think about how to classify them into the two big categories of whether they are covalent substances or they are ionic substances. And for the covalent substances, think about are they polar or just nonpolar? If they are polar, then do they form ion? Um, do they form hydrogen bonding with water molecules? or do they form dipole-dipoles interactions? And if they are ionic, do they form ion dipoles or they have very strong ionic forces that they will not break um, in water, that they will not dissolve it in? All right, so this should be it for now.